The tropical island of Bimini lies in the northwest corner of the Bahamas, off the coast of Florida. In the center of the island, the Worldview 2 satellite captures this image. This is a really strange image because you have this dark green lush landscape all around, but you have this kind of like light colored outline of what almost appears to be a shark. Why is there a giant mound shaped like a big shark rising out of the swamp land in the Bahamas? The waters here are among the most shark infested on the planet. There are at least 13 different species of shark recorded here in teeming numbers, drawn to the islands from far and wide. From cannibal hammerheads and aggressive volatile bull sharks to the lethal black tips and tiger sharks, among the largest and second only to the great white for recorded attacks on humans. The local Tiger Beach is one of the most shark-infested beaches in the world. We do know that the uh, Taino people who inhabited many of these islands in this area would have been very familiar with sharks. Some individuals, if they were able to kill or capture a shark, they would take the teeth and make a necklace out of them as a way of showing that they could conquer this animal spirit. It's not strange that the natives who once lived here should fear and respect the shark. The question is, did they worship it? There's no question that ancient cultures elevated or deified uh, certain animals in their cultures, creatures that they looked upon as being powerful and, and representing positive or spiritual qualities that they admired. Ancient Egyptians worshipped certain animals as gods. Horus the hawk, Anubis the jackal, Nekbet the vulture. Their priests worshipped them with spells, magic, and sacrifice. Did the ancient Taino people who for centuries inhabited these islands do the same? Most records of this primitive people were lost when the Spanish conquistadors slaughtered and enslaved them. The only way to find out more is to examine the site. Explorer George Karunas has carried out research into great white sharks. He's come to the Bahamas to investigate the image, but before he heads out to Bimini Island, he wants to know what the locals make of it. He's been given a lead, local amateur historian, Ashley Saunders. Hi, I'm looking for Ashley. I'm Ashley Saunders, sir. Oh, my name is George. I understand that you're the historian. I certainly am. I've been uh, documenting the history of Bimini now for better than 20 years. The Shark Mound, is it man-made or is it a natural occurring thing? The Shark Mound has been shaped by humans, a human civilization, prehistoric. Are there other sites in the area here in Bimini that might suggest that there was an ancient civilization that may have worshiped the shark or may have lived here? Well, in 15 feet of water, there's a submerged set of stones mm -hmm. that uh, might be pointing to uh, ancient civilization, a prehistoric civilization. And these stones have been baffling us on this island for generations. Interesting. Is there anything near the shark mound that may be of significance? Well, it seems as if the nose is pointing towards the spring, the healing hole. The healing the, hole. The fountain of youth. Discovering the mythical fountain of youth has long been the dream of explorers. Local legends say that it became the obsession of Spanish conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon. In 1513, he came here looking for the fountain of youth that he heard about from the Indians down in Puerto Rico. So you think the healing hole may have been the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon was looking for? Might be. Interesting. Now George has a number of leads to follow. Bimini's shark mound lies hidden in the northwest corner of the island, on the edge of the coastal shelf. George must get there by boat. On his way, he stops to investigate what locals believe to be an ancient underwater road. We're anchored right above Bimini Road. It's a series of huge stone blocks that run the entire length of the coastline. Some say that it's a remnant of a lost ancient civilization that's now sunken under the waves. I need to check it out for myself and see what it looks like. If there are, beneath the waves, the ruins of some ancient construction, it would suggest Bimini's ancient inhabitants were equally capable of building a shark mound. 
But it's difficult to tell. At first glance, it's not really obvious what is going on. Seems out of place. Bahamas is known for its sandy bottoms, but here we've got hundreds and hundreds of these huge stone blocks lined all the way along the coast here. We're talking about uh, a series of what appear to be man-made blocks laid out relatively flat that extend for over half a mile in a linear feature that absolutely looks like it was constructed. But in fact, I think it is a natural feature. And a lot of people say that Mother Nature doesn't make 90 degree angles or straight lines, and that's absolutely not true. Geologically, we see this all the time. Either way, the undersea Bimini Road looks strange. If it's natural, then it's unusual. If it's man-made, then it's remarkable. George pushes on towards the large shark shape indicated in the satellite image, which seems to be perched on the coastal shelf at the edge of the Bahamas. Yeah, this looks like yep, a trail. Right there. But it's protected by a seemingly impenetrable mangrove swamp. It's a forbidding place, swarming with blood-sucking insects. Mangrove thickets like barbed wire. The water's teeming with sharks. One thing to see something like this on a satellite image is another thing entirely to get to it on the ground. Obviously, it's not so easy to get to this place. So if it is indeed man-made, it certainly was not made any time recently. The water is shallow, but not too shallow for sharks. You see a lot of sharks around here? Yeah. Yes, what kind? Uh, you got the lemon, you have the nurse sharks, reef sharks, you have the reef sharks, the bull sharks, the tiger sharks. Oh, we have a variety. If you see a baby shark, don't get excited either, okay? If I see a baby shark, don't get excited? No. What if I see an adult shark? Yes, yeah, let him go past too. Just let him go past. This lane is only wide enough for either me or the shark. Open your leg and let him through. <laughs> I'm not opening my legs for any shark. <laughs> what is really strange is that the environment is really inaccessible. This, this whole swampland is not a place where you would normally find something like this. The mangroves are around the water, but there's a, a clearing right here. You can sort of see, if you look closely, where the mangroves basically stop. So Shark Mound has got to be very close now. I see dry land. Yep, that's the shark mount. Bingo. George is immediately struck by the scale and difficulty of this terrain. This labyrinth of mangroves, it's so confusing. I'm just trying to get my bearings, comparing what I can see on the ground with this old satellite image. And it's not easy. What I find interesting is building something that you can't see must be really difficult. I mean, these guys can't look at the things from above like we can today. Without a proper archeological investigation, it's hard to tell more about the shark mound. But there's one more lead for George to follow. Could the healing hole described by locals be the same fountain of youth described to conquistadors in the 16th century? And does the nose of the shark mound indicate its location? We believe that this is the nose of the shark pointing this way, I think. So it looks like the body of the shark is oriented more or less north, south, east, west. Pretty close, actually. Could be a coincidence, or maybe someone intended it to be that way.